These are stories about murder. (gasps) Could there be a hidden clue? Things that are exceptionally alarming. Like what? Just alarming things. Because he's at the bottom of the ocean, every little sound is intensely magnified. He hears animals eating his friends and crewmates. Oh my god. Instead of scattering ashes, he had simply dumped them in the parking lot. (laughs) In Germany, before a royal court. Thought she was Polish. No, the magician is Polish. This is Three Shots In. And today, we're talking about... Hey everyone, welcome to Three Shots In. I am Jake. I'm Jess, and this is episode 32. It is, and it's a fully electric episode. Likely shocking episode. Electrifying. Yes. Like... Because the episode topic was electric. Yeah. So you're going to be shocked. Yeah. Probably. Uh, I think Prince says electric once or something. It's oh. electric. Do, 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 Oh, he, he you, says it twice. <laughs> that was, that was not what I, I what's the, what's the thing was, like? I didn't think that was. Prince. Oh, it was, uh, it was the, the like, dearly beloved, <laughs> we are gathered here today to get through this thing Being called, called life. life. Um, I don't know. I, I really like Prince's music, but I'm not like a huge fan. So I don't remember. Yeah. I don't know. And that's not anything. Electric about- word life. And that means forever. And that's a really long time. <laughs> and that's a really long time. So yeah, he, he says electric. So just like that. That's what this episode is. Electric. It has nothing to do with Prince. All <laughs> of that was meaningless. <laughs> Pretend you didn't hear it. Wow. Wow. They hear everything, especially our wonderful, beautiful patrons. Thank you so much, patrons, for being patrons. What do we the call them? Place. Oh, sh- shot heads. Our shot heads. Yeah. Thanks, shot it's heads. like shit heads, but you're better than that. Your heads aren't full of shit. They're full of full shots. Shots. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's better, but like just, you know? It's just? No, no, no like just better. Like barely better. It's barely better than shit. I think it's then, a lot no, better than, than a, shit. No, than a shithead. I like, I like shitheads. I think it's, it's a term of endearment. It's playful. Like the South Harmon Institute of Technology. Is that a playful technological school? No, the you didn't you didn't see the movie Accepted, uh, Justin Long. They invent oh, their own college. Ask me about my wiener, yeah, yeah, that yeah. whole thing. No, I never saw it. Yeah. Oh well, they go. They he calls the school the South Harmon Institute of Technology, mm-hmm. and the acronym is shit. Oh, <laughs> and no. they call them all. They call themselves shitheads. Anyway, um, we're sipping on some. Some little drinks, some some gin, and uh, one of those pineapple aqua frescas. Yeah, it's the cheapest mix you could imagine, mixed with some fairly expensive liquor. Yeah, um, you know, because if you're going to buy us something expensive, we're going to use it the way we use it, which is the trashy way. Mm-hmm. Aqua fresca, which is a powder drink mix. Yeah, and it was pineapple flavored, um, and then we put expensive gin in it. Empress, actually. 18. Yeah, 1908. 1908. Uh, updates. You got any updates? Um, I played Portal 1 and 2. Interesting. You like that? I loved it. Really? It never called me, and I kind of just started playing it on a whim. Yeah. I actually think you'd have a blast with it. It never called me either. The The robots seem, like, funny, especially in Portal 2, from what I've seen. Like, the, they really jumped up the humor in it. But, uh, like, puzzle games really never called me. It's really challenging and it doesn't come across as like a glorified like phone app game, which is what I thought it was going to be. Um, it's not like that at all. And the first one is actually much funnier. Really? The second one's funny. It is really funny. But the first one is funnier. Yeah. No, never. Never gave it a shot. I think you'd enjoy it. Well, maybe. You'd probably finish it up in just a couple hours too, you know, because you're such a brainy, smart guy. Because I'm so smart. Yeah. Such a smart guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm really smart. Uh, my update, I'm also really old now. I'm an old man. Um, very recently, I decided to to do, you know, more more fatherly things since I got a, got one coming on the way. You know, I'm going to be a dad. You're just practicing. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, you know, what do dads do? And I was like, they watch lame action movies, you know? Our dad did. Uh, and so I, I tried watching the Transformers movies, <laughs> with the ones without Shia LaBeouf. Um, it was bad. Yeah. I couldn't even do that. Right. So I had to turn those off and I picked, I picked a different one. I went a different route. You went, I went older school. I went mission impossible. Right. And I'm here to tell you 
this is before before the update. Uh, Mission Impossible one, you know, it's classic. It's fine. You can talk shit, but it, it was a fine. It was an okay movie. Two and three were absolute garbage. Super bad. No good. Bad, bad, bad movies. Okay. Four, five, and six. Those are pretty good. Okay. Pretty good movies. I enjoyed them thoroughly. And then what's the one we just watched in theaters? I didn't watch it in theaters with you because you all were like, oh, yeah, no, we're not doing anything at 2 p.m. on a Wednesday. We're not doing anything at all. We can all go at 2 p.m. on a Wednesday. And uh, I have a job and I was working. Because you were the only cuck. The um, The only wage cuck. I'm not the only wage cuck. Cucking it for a wage. Nope. There's a few people. Okay. A lot of people were there, though. Because so. yeah, most of you are lame and stupid and you don't have jobs. I do have a job. I could afford to go, you know. <laughs> anyway anyone can afford the matinee jessica um just so you know it was garbage it sucked you don't have the same context that i do i guess that's true because what made the fourth movie so good was the perfect callback to the older movies uh-huh. even though they weren't good yeah. it was perfect yes um yeah anyways uh, i've been falling asleep on the couch at like you know 7 p.m watching my movies normal dad things um i've been waking up just naturally between like 4.45 and 6.15 every single morning. I just wake up and I'm awake. Okay. Um, but it has a consequence. Um, last night I went to sleep at about 9.15. Mm-hmm. Um, today I was, I got home from work and was like, oh, you know, I slept like nine hours. Like I feel great. I can stay up. And then it was like seven o'clock and I was like, Oh man. <laughs> oh geez. Oh, gosh. And so I laid down to take a nap and was like, it's fine. I was like, I'm just going to nap for a little bit. Like I'll wake up to my alarm, whatever. Uh, apparently I did wake up to my alarm and I turned it off. And next thing I know, it's like really dark outside. And like, I was kind of, I was like a little sweaty. Yeah. Like in my bed. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like, confused, yeah, but like angry about it too. <laughs> and I, I was like, I, you know, I, I felt, I felt too sleepy to have only been sleeping for like an hour. Yeah. And so when I look at my phone and it's like almost 10 o'clock and I was like, <gasps> and I look and you would text me like, um, like, <laughs> are you still coming? Are we still going to record? Today? And, and I had texted like, like, yeah, I'm, I was asleep. Uh, I can, I can still come. <laughs> you put I asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I still come. I was like, okay. Yeah. (laughs) And then I like hurriedly rushed. I like threw a hat on. I lint rolled my shirt because I had, (laughs) I had like bed fuzz all over me. Um, And then I I got here. So that's my update is I I think I'm old now. Also my hips hurt. Um, My back hurts. Uh, I, I, I've been getting um, like my, uh, I get like acid reflux when I drink a lot of coffee. (laughs) <laughs> wow. dude i'm telling you you really I, jumped into it i turned 26 and it's all been downhill like rapidly declining Why are you aging so fast i don't know i don't even get heartburn when i drink coffee i don't know and i'm i'm very scared because i think this means next i'm gonna start getting hangovers and i'm not ready for that i'm so excited actually. <laughs> i'm not ready for, for hangovers <laughs> well i just i just can't it doesn't matter because we have party patch oh which we'll tell you more about later I I will need to make more purchases. Yes, I do have a little more to add to my update since, you know, you went on at length two things Uh to acknowledge, you know, some of the episodes coming out a little late. There's just a lot going on behind the scenes. We still have just obligations and stuff. The podcast is super important. We are trying to make it a priority. There's just a lot of stuff going on. So thank you for your patience. That's the more boring update. The more exciting one. Terry had something really spooky happen to him the other day. Ooh, in the house? Mm-hmm. What kind of spook? So I texted Lyle about it. I can't remember why. Okay. But I did. Um, I think, honestly, I was just in the process of talking shit to him when it happened. So I updated him on Did he see the weird black and white zebra demon? No, 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 no. no. That's you only. I have <laughs> never seen a, a zebra demon. But uh, Terry's in the bathroom. And the reason I brought up Lyle is because I started the story with him with, so Terry's taking a shit because <laughs> he was, and he told me to leave it out, <laughs> but I'm going to include it because it's the truth. So Terry's in the bathroom. Everybody poops. He hears the doorknob go and he looks at it and it was moving, but it was like gently, you know, it wasn't like anything crazy. And then he hears, he goes, uh, Jess. And then he hears me. He hears my voice go, Hey, but it was like quiet, but it was my voice. 
And he was like, baby, are you, is everything okay? Are you okay? What happened? Silence. It's obviously not me. I was like, did he wipe and get up or did he just like get up to come to your aid? He called me <laughs> to, to like angrily like demand an explanation. <laughs> and I'm on the other side of the house. I was in the kitchen at the time. Yeah. And I had left my phone by the computer. And so I got up and what's funny is I'd been at my computer. I'd been next to my fucking phone for like a really long time. And I get up to make myself a snack. And when I come back, I have a missed call from Terry. So I'm like, oh, fucking great. He needs toilet paper. And <laughs> I didn't answer the phone. I'm going to hear it now. And so he calls again and I answer and I hear, are you fucking kidding me right now? And I'm like, I got up for just a second. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. And I think he's about to say, get me toilet paper. And he goes, no, no, no. Were you in the room? So I tell him, no, I wasn't. I was in the kitchen. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't I didn't see you, that you were calling. I walked away just for a second. And he's like, but you didn't come in here. Yeah. So we've got a little doppelganger situation going on in the house. Ooh, spooky. Because I've told you before, there was a time me and Ryan both saw Terry walk through the house, down this hallway into our bedroom and close the door, shut it. We both heard the, sh the door close and everything. I went in there to find him and it's pitch dark in there. There's nobody in there. I looked through the whole thing. It's empty. And I came out looking around for him, couldn't find him. And I asked Ryan, which is my oldest son, did you see dad? And he confirms it. Yeah. He just walked into the room and closed the door. And it turned out Terry was in the kitchen with his headphones on. Ah. So we didn't hear anything and it definitely wasn't him. So, a so it's a copycat it's around a bamboozler. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Maybe it was, was it walking seductively back to the bedroom? Was it trying to lure you? No. Mm -mm. No, no, just walking normally. I have a feeling this doppelganger just doesn't get seduction really. Just doesn't oh. understand it. Or maybe it's just not in its nature, you know, because it, it came to Terry while he was pooping, you know? Well, maybe it thought like, like his cheeks are spread. This is my time. You it's know. a good opportunity, mm -hmm. but once again, to something that wants to be sexy, but also doesn't get how to be, that would make sense. Okay. You know, that's fair. Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh spooky, super spooky, so, just in time for spooky season. I was like, hate that for you guys. Love that for me in the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and spin the wheel. Go for it. I'm bleeding. Why? What'd you do? I thought that there was just like something on my leg. Okay. And so I just like, you know, scraped it off. Yeah. It was apparently like a scab or something. So now your leg is bleeding? I've got, I've got blood on my hands. Can I see? Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. There's a little blood on my finger right there. And like, you can't really see it because there are lights in oh, here. So weird, it's but like, like a tiny little scrape. Yeah. I didn't say I'm fucking like bleeding out over here. I didn't say give me stitches. I didn't you say call 911. Say, Oops. I scratched off a scrape. I'm bleeding just a tiny Oh, it's just a little. <laughs> No, I'm fine. Why you got to be so little, dramatic? There's a little blood. Just a little blood. Okay, well, what did the wheel land right. on? What electronic device do you lean on the most, not your phone? Also not the computer, because I'm editing all the time, I'll say. Yes. Yeah. Like, same, for the same reason. Yeah, and when we say lean on, like, you need, not like a television. The air fryer. Ooh. In my kitchen. Especially right now, our stove, or uh, not the stove, the oven is broken. Mm -hmm. So all of the hot food is cooked in the air fryer. Okay. That's that's a good one. I'd be lost without that air fryer. Uh, the elevator at work. <laughs> <laughs> so that you don't have to take the stairs. Yeah, I work on the sixth floor. Ooh, that's a <laughs> lifesaver. <laughs> yeah. Um, Imagine how enormous your fucking quads would be, though. No. No, it's, it's fine. Well, plus it's a creepy ass, like, stairwell. There's, like, two of them. And like one is significantly darker than the other. Okay. But it happens to be like the closest one to like our office. And so like I've gone down the stairs before. Because why not? Yeah. Because I'm like, oh, I didn't want to wait. Or like someone was waiting by the elevator and I was like, well, I'm not riding with them. You know, I'll just take the stairs. Oh, got it. Um, And it's, you know, I get to the bottom and it's kind of like, you know, it's like I'm not like out of breath, but it's like, ooh, a little, you know, and then I walk to my car and it's fine. I'm not like tired or whatever. Just like, you know, that it's a nice little heart rate. Made me, made me breathe a little more jump. You know? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't dare go up those stairs, six flights of stairs. I don't think so. Not happening. You have to go okay. up the thing and then there's the, the flat part and then up another, and that's one floor and so on and so on. Um, yeah, 
that's that's not going to happen. Hard pass ever. <laughs> uh, I had a coworker that was like, you know, trying to get into fitness, and she was like, was like, okay, I'm gonna. She, she wanted to get chips from the vending machine, right, which is on the first floor. Takes the elevator to the first floor, and then you know comes back to the office, and it took her a little while, like longer than just like the minute down and up on the elevator and yeah. getting your chips. Um, and walks in and is like damp and is like, <sighs> <laughs> cause she went up all the stairs and it fucking like almost killed her. <laughs> it's a good workout. No. Well, anyway, it's time for my stories. Yes. You're a, you're electrifying yes. stories. Yes. These are actually pretty shocking. I think you'll be shocked. Okay. I decided to talk about electrical appliances that killed. Oh. Yes. That took lives. Like an elevator. Like it, but I'm not talking about that today. Okay. We're talking about electrical appliances all the way back in the Edwardian era. I don't know when that is. I got you. <laughs> Late 1800s, early 1900s, when electricity was invented. Was it invented then or was it just made like commercial? Uh, I don't know. Discovered, harnessed, whatever you want to say. I think it was, that was just the time when they were able to like, you know, move when, power lines when, around. When devices that harnessed electricity were invented. Okay. Is that what you need to hear? Yes. Well, yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when electricity was harnessed, uh, it kind of brought with it this frenzy of retailers and inventors um, who didn't understand it, by the way, because okay. it was br- very new, pushing expensive electric goods on the wealthy. Okay. And killing a fuck ton of them in the process. Oh, killing the wealthy? Like a lot of them, <laughs> yeah. Okay. We begin. I was like, what stupid ass convenience did they pay for that killed them? Oh my God, we're about <laughs> to get into it. The list is not long, by the way. Look, this is a wig warmer. <laughs> like some stupid shit. Not that, but as stupid as that, okay. yeah. We begin first with electricity itself. I'll explain. Okay. When electrical wires were first run through homes, they were all completely exposed. Copper wire. So people just were like, I wonder what happened if I just gripped this. Yeah. Oh no, I'm slip. I'm tripping. I'm falling. Accidentally graze the wire (laughs) Mm. and die. That happened actually pretty often. Uh, There was no understanding yet that wires needed to be insulated or even grounded for that matter. Uh-oh. Yeah, no, that 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 didn't happen yet. Just wasn't a thing. Um this was also the time a time before fuse boxes. So electrocution and electrical fires were a very big concern. Okay. And in a world where gas lamps and gas heating was actually also still pretty new. Yeah. Explosions were also a concern. <laughs> so okay. a lot of that happened and we move on now. Is that, is that why that, that, that earthquake in San Francisco back in the early like 1900s killed so many people? That would make sense. Like a Probably. lot of like electrical shit. Probably. Well, that's when indoor plumbing was also a new thing. Just a lot of gases that people didn't understand were building up and were super flammable and combustible. Yeah. We're going to learn a lot more about that, actually. <laughs> Bummer. Okay. <laughs> but people were killed with their own methane gas. Their own poop killed them. Their own farts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sam talked not too long ago about Roman fire toilets. Fire toilets. (laughs) (laughs) Because you just never knew. They literally, you didn't, haven't heard this yet. They would literally say a prayer for protection before they took shits. Because the fucking hole in the wooden box might explode. Or you might get, literally get your ass or coochie lips (laughs) bitten by a rat or something. (laughs) It was my coochie lips, bro. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's a really dangerous time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, shitting, pooping and peeing into indoor plumbing. Was, was a dangerous game. It stayed pretty dangerous for a long time. Okay. We move on to the toaster. Okay. Yes. The toaster for bread, which was, was uh, invented 30 years before pre-sliced bread was like a... A common oh thing. Oh my god, you had to cut your own bread to I put know. in the toaster? Cut it yourself and then put it in the toaster. Have you ever have you ever actually like cut bread? Yeah. It sucks. It's always too thick. Or too thin. Because you overcompensate 
because yeah. the first slice was so fucking no because if you try to cut it too thin then you fuck up and you like go like you're going down halfway and like, it's a diagonal like, slice <laughs> no. a half slice yeah <laughs> so the toaster <clears throat> the original toaster used to only toast one side at a time so you had to put your piece of bread in after turning it on or turn it on once the bread was inside and just kind of stare at it until you thought one side was good then, then manually it. take it out somehow safely and then flip it around and sit there and watch that too to make sure that it didn't burn. That um, doesn't seem like such a convenience. Not really. No, but it, people did buy it and you really did have to sit there and stare at it because it did not turn off automatically. Right. It pretty much always burnt things. You also couldn't adjust the heat setting. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can adjust the heat setting with a regular toaster even today. You you can. Remember the little dial? Like what uh, through I've, a certain number? I've heard something that the dial does not is not levels of toastiness. I've heard the same thing. Time. I just don't buy it. <laughs> I just don't believe it personally. When I put it on 10, it gets burnt. When it's on one, it barely crisps. It You can, like the argument that it's, it's minutes and not levels I, of crispiness. Well, I don't, know, I don't know that it's minutes. I just, it's time. The time that it's in there. It's levels of crispiness. The only one is I think it can be super powered. And that's when you press the bagel button. Mm, right. Right. Okay. Um, so the toaster. Yeah. Like most other small appliances in the Edwardian kitchen, it was screwed into a light socket for power. So typically you had okay. a light hanging from the ceiling in a kitchen. They would take huh. the cord that power... Well, it, an uninsulated cord for a very long time. You would take that, uh, a wire, and you had adapters that would help you to plug like a fuck ton of stuff. Into undo the, into undo the, light. the kitchen light and plug everything into that light socket. Yeah. Interesting. This was before wall sockets. Yeah. Um, the very, very first model of the toaster was called the Eclipse. Okay. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, and it had coils made of iron, which actually melts really easily. So that was really dumb. Okay. And it did cause some fires. So that wasn't super popular. They replaced that pretty quick with like a nickel other metal mix. Next. That didn't kill anybody? Oh, it did probably. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like a lot of things did. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Next up. Um, the electric tablecloth. Here we go. Here's one of those things. <laughs> yeah. No, it's going to kind of gradually get worse as we go an elect so i have pictures for you i'll show okay. them in a second let me describe it first okay the electric tablecloth was essentially a live wire wound up and down between two pieces of fabric that were sewn together the idea was that you could plug the tablecloth into the wall and use small electric lamps with little metal prongs sticking out from underneath them um and you know similar to taking something holding a candle you could pick it up and move it to some other part of the table and set it down and when you set it down the little prongs would pierce the fabric and touch the live wire and turn on so you could move it around as you wanted for convenience okay mm -hmm. um but you know tablecloths on a table where you like eat and stuff people spill things a lot oh i didn't think about that yeah like a lot all the time <laughs> Especially when there's children. So that did not catch on. That was like very quickly unpopular. Okay. But here are some pictures of it. Just don't read what's next. I'm totally going to read what's next. Don't. I mean, that's pretty neat, you know? Yes. That on paper, you know, it sounds interesting. That looks cool. But at the same time, you have a live wire where people are... Eating food and yeah, but if I don't things. know what that is, pretty cool. Kind of neato. I don't know that I'd buy one, right? But like, I'd like play with my friends. You know, they had one. They had an electric tablecloth. Yeah, you know, I'd fuck with it. You know, move that light around. Or something like, look, uh -huh. it's so fucking crazy. I can pick this lamp up and put it over here, and it still lights. Yeah, it's not even. There's no cord or anything. Yeah, that's cool. I guess. Okay. That's pretty cool. Sure. Because, like, they're moving lights and the lights aren't plugged in and they, like, just set it down and it lights up. That was probably, like, magic to them. It really was. Like, that's pretty cool. Until the fires. 
Right. The fires would have. <laughs> <laughs> then it wasn't so magical. A little less, you know. There are only two left on the list. Okay. And they're a lot worse than that. <laughs> worse than a tablecloth. Yeah. Okay. The hair dryer. Hair dryer. Like a... A little blow dryer. Yeah, for blow dryer. Lady hair. Yeah. yeah. You may be surprised to learn the hair dryer actually was not a fire hazard. At least not more than like everything else that in the Edwardian area. Sure. Era. Manufacturers such as Conair and General Electric sold hair dryers that literally blew asbestos right into your face uh, up until 1979. <laughs> <laughs> We're drying your hair as best as we can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it was probably lined with asbestos in order to prevent fire. And that it did. It worked. That was helpful. You <laughs> yeah. know, asbestos doesn't burn. That's why asbestos was so popular in the Edwardian era. Um, and they put it in fucking everything. So when people were dying of mesothelioma or whatever it is that asbestos gives you some kind of uh, lung cancer, um, yeah. they thought it was all the other shit that had asbestos. They didn't think about the blow dryers that blew asbestos right into your face and nose and mouth. Look, in their defense, they didn't know that asbestos was so bad. That's true. Or at least they didn't know right away. And it was making too much money. It was just too good. You right. know, that they couldn't, they weren't just going to, they weren't just going to stop. Right. That's true. That's true. That's on them after that point. But still, you know, mm -hmm. we didn't know. Now we know. <laughs> yeah. So use of, like I said, there was a lot of shit in the Edwardian era, era that used asbestos. So like insulation. Yes, in I houses. Knew. And, and know about offices that. and yeah. But also like kitchen tile and the siding of people's homes. I did not know that. I didn't even know it would prevent fires. I thought it was a I it thought it specifically burn. was like insulation. Well, it doesn't burn. And um so this particular era, the gas gas lighting, gas powered things was still pretty new. They barely had time really to get used to it by the time electricity was invented. So fires were still very common because they didn't know how to properly make sure gas wasn't fucking leaking everywhere. Ah. And it was. Oh, that's right. And You're then, you know, you have a gas leaky house and you introduce live wire light switches. Yeah, I forgot just, gas didn't used to have a smell to it. Was not a great combination. In fact, I bet it was all of this shit that made people want to add a smell to gas in the first place. Yeah. It was pretty bad. Um, and actually, so in 1979 was when they had a big recall of all of these hair dryers. In 1989 was when it was officially outlawed. But that was overturned in 1991. So, <laughs> so they, they can still have a, keep asbestos an eye out. in them? Uh, there's, it's legal in, and it's been legal for a while to use asbestos in certain things. They just are wiser about using it now. You put it places that people aren't going to be around Probably. I'm really not sure, actually. I'd be interested in looking that up. Like, how is asbestos actually used today? Because people talk about it and they're like, oh, no, you know, not that. I could see them using it in, like, power plants. I'm not you sure. Because that's more outdoors. Like, you're not yeah. really breathing in all the asbestos. It's fire resistant. Yeah. The issue, though, is just that it's fibrous. So when it's disturbed at all, shaken... Specifically, when it was used in these like Edwardian houses all over the fucking place, when they would want to tear one down, all of that dust is oh, all yeah. asbestos and it's everyone's breathing it in. And then, like, they, I swear to God, those commercials, they're like, if you were a loved one, I was been affected by most of the, like, I swear, all those videos, it shows that asbestos in the air and they're like, <sighs> <laughs> just like breathing every little. Right piece that yeah. they can and asbestos plays the long game you don't actually know your like lungs well, are all shredded up until like 30 40 years I was later. Like, but even then some people were fine some people never nothing ever happened mm -hmm. most of them not the case though a lot of them <laughs> got really fucked up yeah last on the list the refrigerator mm. i like refrigerators a lot of people do i love my refrigerator it keeps my beers cold preserves the our food you know yeah back in the day before the refrigerator People used cold cabinets. It was literally a cabinet. It was lined with sawdust and they just put a fuck ton of imported ice in it and hoped that it didn't melt quickly. But it's ice, so it did melt. And it like, um, rotted the shit out of their cabinets? Maybe. I don't know. Basically not super convenient. When the refrigerator was invented in the early 1900s, it was actually worth 700 
like European pounds, British pounds, uh, which in 1905 was roughly the equivalent of 70. So one British pound in 1905 was like, I did this conversion, you know, cause I'm super smart, um, is equivalent to 78 and a half pounds currently. Okay. So 78 times. So if it was 700, that means buying a fridge in the Edwardian era $4, was like spending almost 55,000 pounds today. Oh, 50,000 or oh, 40. That's right. 40,000. Oh shit. It was really fucking expensive. It was more expensive than buying a car, which was also new at that time. Yeah. Also, they weren't that big. No, I remember they looked like really bulky, but a lot of that was like uh, the liner to yeah. like keep it all cold. Mm-hmm. So it was basically wow. like a really big crate that could fit like a quart of milk inside. It's like it's like when those motherfuckers show up to a party and like they're like, oh, do you have a cooler? And they're like, yeah, I got one. And they show up with like one of those Yeti coolers. <laughs> and it's like, look, I get it. That ice will stay ice for uh, like a fucking week. But God damn it. That cooler looks big, but it's so insulated. There's like barely room to put your 12 pack in. Yeah. Yeah. Hate those Yetis. Mm -hmm. Um, even worse, you know, than being really bulky and not having a lot of space, you know, to keep stuff inside. Um, the refrigerator was prone to leaking rather than using ice. It was cooled with chemicals. Cool. And it, and it leaked those chemicals. It did. Yeah. Those gases definitely leaked out because the, um, I wouldn't say science, but just common sense, you know, of how easily gases leak out of something because it's just a bunch of poison air. (laughs) Right. Um, people weren't super wise to that. So it was leaking out all over the place, Mm -hmm. you know, and in the refrigerators, they liked to use chemicals like, um, ammonia. (laughs) Oh, Methyl chloride and sulfur dioxide, which are flammable, Uh if not explosive, toxic, deadly, and also literally the chemicals used to gas the trenches in World War One. Mustard gas. Oops. Yeah. (laughs) Super bad. People would go comatose from inhalation in their sleep. One family of four apparently died overnight. Yeah. Um, It was bad enough that Albert Einstein took notice. And he actually started developing or trying to invent something safer. But the guy who discovered Freon beat him to it. Okay. So, yes, he was trying to make something. He may have created something. But the Freon guy, he was just more popular. You know, they're trying to get rid of Freon. Trying to say Freon's bad for us now. It's bad for the environment. Not necessarily for us, but bad for the environment, I guess. Well, I don't care what we use so long as it keeps my house cool. I would love to come home and it is 65 degrees. Beautiful. Like it's not, it's not cold where you're uncomfortable, but it's cold enough that if you're not wearing a sweater, you're uncomfortable. You know, like I would love a sweater, sit on the couch. You know, I got my little socks on. Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. Danny would love it to be like 74, which is garbage. It's not great. I'm like, I'm sitting on the couch with shorts and a t-shirt and no socks. Well, it's also and I'm uncomfortable. Like what we have going on here, the AC unit we have here is just really fucking old. Um, so the coolest it can keep it at the hottest points of the year is like hottest point of the year during the hottest parts of the day. It will even with the AC cranked and going all day long, the coolest it will be is like eighty Oof. to eighty one. Yeah, it can be pretty rough here. Between the hours of like three and six. Um, but otherwise it works pretty great. Just, you know. Yeah. When I lived here, I escaped that because I was at work. Yeah. And my beautiful air conditioned building. <laughs> and that one, that was before we moved. We were on the, we were on the first floor of that, of that office. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. No stairs there. Right. No elevators. You know, sometimes you get an elevator and it stinks. Just a someone stinky. probably farted in it. Like it smells like BO. Yeah. Like a bus, a public bus. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like it. I also don't like those chemicals in your refrigerators. <laughs> you Edwardian fools. I had no idea. I mean, look, they also paid $50,000 for this. Like they got scammed. They got super fucking scammed. Yeah. Cause all of these eager retailers and stuff were like, just fucking invent something. People will buy it. Yeah. Well, they did. Also- they invented like little washing machines um, that could hold like barely anything, but they were bulky because there was so much 
mechanical. They were enormous uh-huh. and they barely helped you. Uh huh. Like it wasn't that, that they convenient. invented like this, uh, not a, not a dishwasher, but a dish dryer. So you could wash your dishes and then put them in the dish dryer and then turn it on and it would dry your dishes. Right. <laughs> like, so, yeah, but so would the counter. <laughs> that was another thing I looked into um, or kind of just found like doing this research. The Edwardian era was the era that immediately followed the Victorian era because it was Queen Victoria. OK. And then her son was Edward. So the Victorian era, when you see like Penny Dreadful, for example. Yeah. That's Edwardian. Is it? Yeah. Because you see electricity in there. Only they the have, rich had it. Yeah. Right. Only the, you know, the richies. Um, but the Victorian era looked pretty similar. There was no electricity, but it looked similar. And when you in Penny Dreadful, just because that's the only thing I can think of right uh, now. And it's like awesome. off the top of my head. Yeah. When you see the poorer people, they're still walking around with like gas lamps and uh-huh. candles and stuff. Um, there was this like culture of like keeping up with the Joneses. But not just that, like outdoing the Joneses. So when you see like how their houses were decorated and stuff, it was all this like extravagant, like expensive material and bougie wallpaper with all these intricate designs and like fucking clutter everywhere. Yeah. Like there's just meaningless items you don't even need and aren't going to use all over the place everywhere. Kind of like, you know, how Danny decorates your house. I was like, dude, it sounds like Danny would be thriving. (laughs) In the Victorian era (laughs) and the Edwardian era. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, when all of this expensive new shit started coming out, they were like, oh, fuck yeah. Like there was this, uh, this scientist or not scientist historian was trying to demonstrate, I invite you to my home for dinner and I'm a well-to-do like upper middle class to, you know, wealthy, like high upper class sort of person. I'm not just trying to entertain you. I'm trying to impress you. Okay. And he was like, and this is how they did it. And it was like, I'm going to make. Like, not only am I going to just surround you with as many electric things as I can. Like the tablecloth? But yeah, like the, like the tablecloth. Yeah. I'm also going to like make cookies, but like accidentally drop like gold and silver coins in it. Oops. Oh, I just have so many. They fell into these cookies. Like, <laughs> you know, like oh, it's ridiculous. Sounds that. like I would also thrive <laughs> in the Victorian era. <laughs> like, oh, if my pockets are just so full. I tripped and... Oh somehow all of this cash ended up yeah. inside of the food. My bad. Like, oh man, look at this. Uh, I accidentally wore my apron that was signed by Lord Tennyson himself. <laughs> it's so crazy. No, really? Like that <laughs> yeah. was, that was the culture. I mean, some people are still like that now, just less. Oh, I need to cut the cake here. Let me use the sword that the queen used tonight. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, I would, I would do very well. If you were rich. Well, I'd be rich. You don't know that. I'd be rich. I'd sleaze all my way into the rich. You're not rich now. Dude, I'm not rich now because fucking it's hard to be doing crime out here. Okay. So you're, you're saying you would do crime in the the Victorian Victorian era? Yeah. Okay. I would, I would be, I would be, I would weasel my way into wealth. I could see that. Like fucking Gatsby, you know? Right. Yeah. That'd be Mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Okay. I could do that for sure. But now it's, they got fucking agents everywhere and cameras everywhere. And fucking AI recording my voice, knowing when I'm on a phone call with, you know, El Chapo or some shit. Stupid. El Chapo is probably a fucking operative now. Stupid. Double agent. Yeah. Whoa. (laughs) You're an idiot. (laughs) Let's go on break. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Electric. Gosh, I love electricity. <gasps> what? Shocking. Oh. Right? It shocks. Mm-hmm. You know whose products, the quality of which especially, are just sh- so shocking to me? Whose? Our sponsors. That's right. Tilted Tinker, Woodcraft, and Wizardry. We'd like to thank Tilted Tinker, Woodcraft, and Wizardry. They are a company that makes woodcraft products. Like plaques with all sorts of hilarious sayings and coasters with sarcastic twists. All of that dry humor is mixed in with Dungeons and Dragons accessories like dice towers, dice dungeons, and DM screens. Everything is made here in the USA. Yes, a family-owned business. They use American wood in American hands. Nice. (laughs) 
They personally create all of their merchandise. Yes, they are close friends of ours, but that's the most that we'll say. It could be anyone, but they're fantastic. They are. They are fantastic, and it really could be anyone at all. We own many of their products. That's true. All of them are of great quality. The greatest. You can visit their website at TiltedTinker.com. Reach out to them at info at TiltedTinker.com. They are Tilted Tinker on all their social medias. That's Tilted, T-I-N-K-E-R. You should go and buy something from their website because they're awesome. And they love us, just like we love you. You know when you wake up one day and you're just old now and <laughs> and you're you're just you're just completely shocked by how old you've become. Your body just can't handle the liquor anymore. It just completely devastates you in the next the next day. Yes. I you, do know what that feels you like. You wake up feeling like complete dog shit. Maybe you throw up. Mm-hmm. Maybe you just feel queasy. Mm-hmm. You know, you yes. you drink Alka-Seltzer and, and pray that it all goes away. Right. You know, yes, everyone, everyone in your 9 a.m. meeting is looking at you and they know. They do? Yeah. Whoa. But you don't have to worry about that, old people, because there's Party Patch. That's right. Party Patch. They prevent all of those hangover symptoms. They do. Just like a nicotine patch pumping that nicotine straight into your blood. Party patch pumps vitamins into yours. It does. Glorious vitamins that prevent hangovers from ever happening. You just slap that bad boy onto your body, maybe your arm, maybe your chest. Go to threeshotsin.com and click the link for party patch. When you're at checkout, remember to use three shots in. Get yourself 10% off. We just... Past Labor Day, you know, Halloween's coming it's on right its after way. that Thanksgiving. We're practically in Christmas right now. Wow, okay? that was fast. So quick. And what's a better gift than liquor? I love getting booze as a gift. It's my favorite gift, actually. Love it. And uh, you can gift it to someone as well. With Pour More. A liquor subscription service that will pro- deliver liquor directly to your or your gift receivers, receivers, gift receiver, go to three shotsin.com, click the link for pour more and subscribe. You get a fresh bottle of liquor delivered every month. By visiting pour more through our link, that will let them know that we're the ones who sent you. Remember I told you that I got Danny to watch Game of Thrones? Yes. So this is definitely something that I would recommend for all couples to do if you haven't if one or both of you haven't watched game of thrones watch it together uh before you get married why um danny is a horrible person how do you know this so uh we just began season four (laughs) so we passed season three there is uh, a little event known as the red wedding ah yes that goes down in season three and danny just sat there blank the whole time and then when it was over, I was like, oh, like, wasn't that crazy? And she was like, eh, I didn't really like any of them. Wow, really? I was like, what the fuck? Who do you like? Guess who she likes. Guess who her favorite character is. Who? Samwell Tarly. Ew. That's what I said. So I saw this video on Instagram. Okay. Now, as far as conspiracy theories go, I have done no research into it other than I saw this one video, but damn, am I convinced the theory conspiracy theory is that the like super rich elites are cloning celebrities in Hollywood and killing the real celebrity. You haven't heard any of those yet? Of course. You know, you've heard them, you know, Avril Lavigne, uh, uh, like the whole Britney Spears thing where she like her, like, you know, wasn't her that was like doing weird dances or whatever. Sure. But specifically one was Simon Cowell, like kind of fell off the face of the earth, like kind of just didn't really, wasn't anywhere. Yeah. You know, which is not uncommon, just whatever. But then returns and makes like a video on Instagram or something. And he doesn't look the same. It looks like him, but like, it's almost like, like his eyes are wrong. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I kind of just thought maybe that was plastic surgery. And that was my thought, too. When I saw those pictures that were, that came out like a while ago, this is a few months ago. 
that that happened. And I didn't think much of it. But then Jamie Foxx kind of also disappeared for a minute there, right? Had a quote unquote medical emergency or whatever. They never explained what happened, which is fine. I don't, I don't think anyone really needs to know what went down. Yeah, nobody's business. But then comes back and puts a video online saying, hey, I'm Jamie Foxx and I'm like, I'm good now or whatever. So number one thing I noticed, his eyes are weird. And just like Simon Cowell, it's almost like there's too much skin. Okay. Like around his eyes. Yeah. Almost like he's wearing like a mask. Like in Mission Impossible? Yes. Like in Mission Impossible. Okay. One thing I didn't notice at all until I saw a picture of the new creepy Jamie Foxx next to OG Jamie Foxx. Apparently his medical emergency caused his skin tone to lighten like by 20 fucking degrees. He looks like a really tan, really tan white guy. What? Yeah. And that was supposed to be Jamie Foxx. And I was like, no fucking way. Like Jamie Foxx is a black man. It's always been a black man. I don't think a medical emergency is going to cause your skin to lighten that much. It It was weird as fuck. It couldn't just be he was sick, so he wasn't like tanning or anything to keep his skin tone even or. No, it wasn't that. Being outside at all. It wasn't that. You sure? Uh, Unless he gets 20 hours of sun a day and that's how he's kept his skin as dark as it was before. Then sure. Okay. Like, it's weird. I'm going to show you the video and then we can, we can discuss more. Okay. So how convinced are you? I'm not. You are an idiot and you're exactly the target that Hollywood, Hollywood wants. I'm going to be, I'm going to be assassinated. I'm not suicidal. I'll say that right here, (laughs) right now, live. He looked older and it looked like he just stopped getting all the cosmetic treatments that celebrities get. Like most of the pictures they were comparing the image of his like live video to were red carpet images. Like you are not, you are far underestimating how much they go through like the days leading up to a red carpet event just to make sure their appearance hasn't changed at all, even though they are aging. How much are they paying you? What? What are they paying you to say this right now? They're are you not a sellout? Me anything. Are you are you sold? You sell yourself out? No, I'm not. Uh, you I'm whoring yourself still for Hollywood? Super poor. And You're whoring your mouth. I'm virginal. Mm. Morally virginal. Look, no one can see if you uh, answer my question honestly. That's true. The cameras are off. Are is did they get to you, Jess? No, I don't believe it. I watched the video. Not convinced. Blink twice if you really are convinced. And this is all a facade. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Time. That was one blink. Because Hollywood's preventing you from blinking <laughs> twice, aren't they? No. They're here now. Hey, Jake. What? Doja released another single. Oh, I haven't heard it. It's called Demons. I haven't heard of that one. There's a demon in it. There's a demon? Yeah, it's Doja. Demons. She painted her skin with black paint. She's a demon in it. So do you want to watch the video? Yeah, we're going to we're going to watch it. Let's whip it out. Um so this this song about demons, what's it called? It's called Demons. Oh. Okay. It's about her inner demons. She was a creepy little demon. Spooky. Just a just a spooky little demon. <laughs> we're back from the break. Yes, we have braked and we broke well. We fucking brocked. <laughs> All right. What's something that you found to be shocking? Hmm. Something that made me clutch my breast. Yes. Gasp. You found it. You found it. Oh, so shocking. Well, I mean, like the same chemicals used in World War One chemical warfare being put in our refrigerators was a big one. It's pretty shocking. Yeah. Uh, I found it pretty shocking that they're making a gladiator too. <laughs> they are. <laughs> yeah. With the same actors. Uh. Or as many as possible? So, no, uh, Russell Crowe has been asked a lot about it. Yeah. And he got really pissed off (laughs) and was like, I'm not answering any questions that you have about Gladiator 2. He's like, I have no part in it. And he's like, and honestly, he's like, I should be paid for how much people ask me about it. Uh, No, apparently it's 
the working title was Gladiator 2. I'm pretty sure it's just a movie that has is gladiators in it. Not so much a sequel, but like maybe it's like another gladiator who knew him or something and talks about him for like a minute or whatever. Okay. Like they're going to, they're going to ride that way. Same universe. Yes. Yes. I think that's what's happening, but, uh, not sure. Okay. Um, but no, Russell Crowe is not involved. And please don't ask him about it anymore. (laughs) No, stop asking him. Poor Russell. (laughs) He's tired. He's fucking done hearing about this sequel. Um, I, you know what, you know what shocked me? What shocked you? Uh, apparently Russell Crowe's new movie, um, the Pope's exorcist. Apparently that's getting really decent reviews. Mm -hmm. It not like a, not like a crazy, like, Oh, it's an 80 plus percent on Rotten Tomatoes or anything, but like horror fans are loving it. I I've heard good reviews as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's on, it's on Netflix or HBO or Paramount. It's on, it's a streaming service that we have. Pretty sure it's Netflix. Um, and I, I think I should watch it. It looked, it didn't call me. In the slightest. Maybe that should be our next three shot cinema. Oh, we could watch the the Pope's mm-hmm. Exorcist. Yeah. Looks interesting. And he he has like a uh like a Italian, like Roman Italian accent or whatever. <laughs> you know, and like he never does great accents, but he does good enough. They're fine. I'm happy with his. It's better than Keanu trying to be British. Yeah. Most things. I think are. anything is better <laughs> than Keanu trying to be British. Uh maybe, maybe not uh not Michael Keaton. Uh, fuck. What's his name? Fucking Waterworld. Oh, trying to sound Irish. Yeah. Oh, it was uh, Kevin Costner. Costner. Kevin Costner trying to to sound Irish was really bad. I had no idea he was trying to sound Irish. Now that it was supposed to be a mix of Irish and Jamaican, because in this you know fictional world where it's all like water and things that float and jet skis somehow. Yeah. Um. Even though, yeah, anyway, uh, he, the like accent that everyone has is a mix of those two things as opposed to like, like Chinese and other things. It's Irish yeah. and Jamaican. That's I get what it. most, everyone most like speak. futuristic movies. They sound either American or Chinese. Yeah. And they speak English and or Chinese. Yep. Yeah. You find anything else shocking? Shocking. I found it shocking that so many motherfuckers were like. Like there were so many news articles uh, yesterday, the day before when like the super blue moon was happening, right? Which is just a blue moon, moon. but also a super moon. So a blue moon just means it's the second full moon in one month. Oh. Doesn't happen often. Oh, That's why they call it a blue moon. I Uh, just assumed the moon was physically blue. No, it just means that a full moon happened on like the first or second of the month and a full moon is happening on like the 30th or 31st of a month. Oh, that's much less exciting than it implies. Very. Um, and then a super moon is when the moon is closer than normal to so the earth, big. so it looks bigger. Mm-hmm. And so this was a super blue moon, right? Rare. Next one won't be for another 15 years. But then again, it's just the fucking moon. You see it all the time. Like, it's there all the time. It's not like it changes, right? It doesn't rotate around. You get to see new craters. It's the same fucking craters so every time. you weren't shocked by the moon. You were shocked by how many? I was shocked by how many articles, like how to view the super blue moon tonight. And how many people were probably reading? I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Go outside and look at it. (laughs) (laughs) Like, if you want to see it, go outside and look at it. Um, you know what shocks me? What? What shocks you? This is kind of a self burn. Um, what shocks me is that I talk a lot of shit about people who are still obsessed with their like zodiac sign and stuff, (laughs) which is a lot of people today. Um, (laughs) but a little part of me, uh, still kind of like likes it. So every now and then, not the, not really astrology anymore, but whenever I make myself tea, this is a little confession, I spill, like if I have like loose leaves and stuff, I'll spill a little extra into my tea. So you can read your, (laughs) your tea leaf fortune. So that there's leaves at the bottom when I'm done and I'll read them and almost 98% of the time I just see blobs of tea. (laughs) And I'm like, oh, be honest. My fate is shit. Be honest. You're waiting for the day when you go the grim, the grim. No, 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 no. I I just want to see fucking anything because like other people are so confident you will. And I'm like, I don't know. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. And I read one the other day and I 
well, red one. I looked at, I fucking looked at the bottom of my teacup just to see if I saw anything. And I was like, I don't know. It kind of like, it looks like a fish to me, honestly. It doesn't actually look like a blob this time. Does that mean something? <laughs> <laughs> so I, <laughs> I looked it up. It's literally just a blob that tapers at the end. And I got really excited. Okay. What does a fish mean? Oh, uh, it meant like you might be a little sick, which I am a you, little bit. You were sick. I was. Um, and that at the same time, you might be like working really hard on something that like nobody fucking notices or sees <laughs> at all. Um, so you're putting a lot of work into something and it's going to take off. You just have to keep going. You know, good luck, bud. I did notice in your sickness, you've been doing a lot for the podcast. <laughs> I have been. Yeah. And so like a little part of me was like, I did it. <laughs> I read my tea leaves. <laughs> oh, you're you're cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the lamest things about me. It's also probably one of the admittedly one of the more like girly things about me. Doesn't matter what the sign is. You just read it. You're like, oh, my God, that's me. You can to find a way to relate everything. to pretty much everything. Yes. Yeah. And they're created that way intentionally. But one, I saw this video on Instagram. This this guy was saying, like, uh, I'm going to assign or tell you what your girl dinner is. Right. You've seen that trend. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what your girl dinner is based on your Zodiac sign and starts going through it. And I was watching it, waiting for Danny's. Right. She's a Taurus. And he was like, he's if you're a Taurus, your girl, girl dinner is. um a string cheese and brownie bites. And I was like, oh, OK, I can totally see you eating that. That was funny. Whatever. Didn't think about it. Like the next day or two days later, I get home from work and, you know, Danny's very pregnant. She doesn't she likes to eat her snacks in bed and watch TV so she can have her like heated blanket and all the shit. Mm -hmm. And she's sitting in bed. I shit you not. We don't purchase brownie bites. Right. I never bought them. She doesn't buy them. And string she's cheese. sitting in the bed holding a brownie string bites. cheese in one hand and she's got a box of brownie bites next to her. And she's got one of those in her other hand. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? And then I started laughing and I was like, dude, he called it. And I was like, damn it. I didn't save the video. I'm like, I should have went to his page. He sees the future. <laughs> I found a legit one. He's real. <laughs> <laughs> it's time. It's time for me to talk about my electric topic and how electric it is. OK, move this. Get, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. I mean, that worked out. Get that out of the way. You didn't drop anything. No, I'm not shocked. Oh. OK, so when we went electric, I wanted to find immediately um, people that were sentenced to the electric chair where things just didn't go right. You had talked about that once. And well, this is this is way more involved. Mm -hmm. This is this is a deep dive. Yeah. OK. Way more common than anyone would think. So before we get into specifically the electric chair, so of all of the executions in the United States, so all the capital punishments that followed through between 1890 and 2010, 3% were botched. Wow. Yes. That's a lot of it. The majority of the botches happening uh, more recently on that end because lethal injection has a 7.12% botched rate. There were stories of people who would get the injection and just scream in pain for however long and not be dead. They would like treat them for like a day or two to get them better and then put them right back and lethally inject them again. Yikes. Yeah. Uh, but I thought this was the electric. It the is. Electric it is. Chair. I was just I just thought it was oh, a little okay. little fun. Um, hanging 3.12 percent botch rate. Uh, lethal gas 5.4 firing squad. Wait, you said 3% botched rate or a third 3%. Oh, okay. So that, not, that's not, not all the time, not that's all the time, not a lot. Um, firing squad, 0%. It always works. It's, <laughs> it's the thing people shy away from the most, I feel like, but I do feel like that's, that's what I would ask for. That's the fastest. I would one. ask for a firing squad. Yeah. Anyway, um, electrocution low 1.92%. Okay. So of the 4,374 people who were killed by the electric chair, 84 of them were botched. We're going to talk about three. Okay. Now I'm going to give you a little insight as to why they are being electrocuted and then how that electrocution went down. John Lewis Evans 
Okay, he, in 1976, was released from prison on parole in Indiana. Him and his, uh, like, fellow convict friend, uh, Wayne Ritter, they went on a two-month-long crime spree after being released from prison. Mm -hmm. Um, Evans and Ritter did over 30 armed robberies, nine kidnappings, two extortion schemes, all across seven states. Um, About five, six months later, uh, they robbed and killed Edward Nassar, a pawn shop owner in Alabama. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, I forgot to mention, Edwards uh, had two young daughters that were in the store with him and witnessed their father get murdered. Uh, I believe they shot him in the back of the head. Uh, Yes, Um, they had a gun that they shot him in the back of the head they stole his gun from the pawn shop and they stole a bunch of shit from the pawn shop. He was caught in March uh, by FBI agents in Arkansas and in April of 1983. So this would be six years later. Mm -hmm. It was time for John Lewis Evans to be executed. Now the execution method at this time was in fact the electric chair. Um, So the first jolt of electricity begins. Sparks and flames erupt from the electrodes that were attached to his leg. Ooh. Now, the electrode then burst and had caught on fire, so smoke and sparks were coming out of everywhere, including underneath the hood that they had put on. Yeah. Um, And you could see smoke coming out of his left temple. Yikes. Now, this at this point, they turned off the electricity. Two doctors went in, they checked for a pulse, and they found one. So they reattached the electrode to his leg, left the room, and cranked it back on. Even though it was malfunctioning? Yep. Yikes. This resulted in, shocker, more smoke, an absurd amount of burnt flesh. They turned it off, they went back in. Again, they found a heartbeat. No. (laughs) Just shoot him. So his his lawyers and people were like saying like no this is un this is cruel blah 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 um, they didn't care they left the room and they cranked the electricity on again uh, it took fourteen minutes of electricity to kill Evans and it left a charred and smoldering corpse. Yikes! So he got slowly cooked. Yeah, essentially brutal way to go. That is so rough. <laughs> Brutal. 14 minutes of being burnt alive from the inside. Like I said, this is one of those things that's like, you don't feel bad for them per se, but also like, that's not cool, man. (laughs) That really sucks. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Okay. So next one is Alpha Otis O'Daniel Stevens. It's a nice long name. It is. Um, He had escaped from jail in Georgia and... A while after, this is now, we're in August of 1974, he went home where he was allegedly with another dude, allegedly. Um, that man would be Charles, oh no, sorry, Charles Asbel. You mean like romantically? I don't think so. I think it just means like another like criminal or something. They're saying like he had an accomplice in oh, okay. his crimes or whatever, and maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But So Charles Asbel was not at home. And Stevens, that is Alpha Otis O'Daniel Stevens. Thank you. I wasn't he, sure which one. He broke into Charles's house and he stole a 357 Magnum pistol. It was already loaded. He stole many other weapons and he took a 1972 Dodge truck. Now, while this burglary was going down, Roy Asbel, that is Charles' father, pulled up in his son's driveway in his Ford Ranchero. Uh, Stevens apparently said uh, that they made eye contact and that Roy said, like, what the fuck are you doing in my house? He saw that Stevens had rifles and he pulled a gun. So Stevens ran to the car, ran to Roy's car. He pulled Roy out of the car, hit him in the face several times. Roy begged not to be hit anymore. Stevens is a large man. He's six foot two. Asbel, so Roy, uh, was only five foot six. 
Oh, and I forgot to mention, uh, Roy was also crippled. He was in a tractor accident. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So Roy usually carried hundreds of dollars on his person. He offered Stephen the money in exchange for his life. Stephen agreed. He took the money, and then he kicked Roy again. Um, he then pistol whipped him, put him back in his truck, and apparently had told his partner to kill him if he moved. Ah. Uh. They drove three miles away. They stopped the car, and Roy got out and tried to run. Apparently, he was hobbling to an abandoned building, and Stevens followed him with three with the three fifty seven Magnum. He took all the money off of Roy, all of his possessions, and then he placed the pistol to his ear and fired twice. Okay, so execution. That was quick. Both bullets went through the skull and exited out of the right temple. Um, an autopsy showed he also had a broken jaw, several skull fractures. The guy wasn't going to make it very long anyway. Because they beat the tar out of him first. They, quote unquote. They. Um, so this would now be 10 years later. He was to be executed by the electric chair. Um, when the first charge of electricity went through, it failed to kill him. Okay, so it wasn't necessarily that there was smoke and shit, but it failed to kill him. Um, Stevens had was struggling to breathe for about eight minutes. They watched him struggle to breathe for eight minutes before they decided to crank the second charge. Um, and this killed him eventually. After the first two minutes... Of they the turned, second time. They, they turned it off again, and there was a six-minute pause so that his body could cool before doctors could then examine him. Um, but they found that he was still breathing, so they decided to jolt him again. Um, then, mind you, they had to wait a little bit, right, to put the third charge on. Yeah. So during that time, so it was a six-minute pause, okay? In that six minutes, he took 23 breaths. He is barely clinging to life. Barely clinging. Yeah. Uh, they did it again, and then um, the uh, then that's what finally killed him, the third one. So, mind you, he wasn't, like, on fire or exploding or anything. It, it was just rough. It still sucks. Yeah, it just was. not as bad as the last one. It was a rough one. Yeah. Um, a prison official said, quote, Stevens was just not a conductor of electricity. Okay. I guess if you were a conductor, it would have it would have went a lot smoother. I mean, if that's so the implication then is that some people are el electrocuted the exact same way and it's done easily. Uh huh. No issues. Some people die in the first two minutes. Some not so much. But, you know, with firing squad, it's instant. They don't feel pain. Oh, I don't know that. Really? Yeah, I don't Aren't, know that. Isn't it all headshots? I don't think so. I think it's eight shots aimed at the heart. Eesh. I would imagine getting shot in the heart is not an instant death. But then I thought it wasn't. But it's a, it's a guaranteed death. But I thought it wasn't eight shots, that it was only one of them had an actual well, bullet. No, it's eight shots. Two of them have a bullet. Six of them have blanks. So that no one has to feel like they're the guilty. Yeah, one it was not. it was, you know, some some smart guy was like, oh, executioners are like super depressed and suicidal. So now, you know, any any two of all eight of you could have done it. Now we don't care and we have doctors do it because, you know, they murder people all the time in hospitals. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or at least, you know, they're sued for that all the time. Anyway, <laughs> next, William Van Diver. Um, so William Van Diver was married to Marianne Van Diver. Her father, Paul Sr., really didn't like William. He demanded that Marianne divorce him because wow. of, you know, his criminal past. Um, and Paul Sr. threatened to inform the police about William Van Diver's past criminal activities. Okay. So, William joined the family in a conspiracy to kill Paul Sr. That's right, his kids fucking hated him, too. Oh, my God. Um, now, according to the agreement, several attempts to poison him were made. <laughs> without success. Finally, they decided to put him under <laughs> with... Ether? Ether. Ether. And inject air into his veins. That would do the trick. I I mean probably. This is this is back in like the seventies again. Yeah. Um so one evening, William and Marianne waited outside of the house 
for a signal from Paul Jr. Okay. The signal was to be that Paul Sr. was asleep. When they saw the signal, they entered the house. Did that freak you out? Yes, it did. <laughs> it's a little, oh, got a little intimate in here. It's just the lampshade. It's that electricity just going wild in here. Whoops. They entered the house and the plan changed at the last moment because they didn't have ether. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Instead, they went into the bedroom with the idea now to smother Paul Sr. While he was sleeping normally. They jumped on him jumped on him while he was in bed, but Paul Sr. fought hard for his life, and another murder attempt was bungled. <laughs> My God. Uh... Yes. Yes. William, however, was determined this is the time. This is the son-in-law. That's right. So he stabbed Paul Sr. in the back with a fish fillet knife. Quote, at least 100 times. Oh my God. 34 deep knife wounds were later discovered on the body. Um, he also hit him in the head with a gun uh, about five or six times. But Paul Sr. was still breathing. No. So William had no other option. He decapitated Paul Sr. Ugh. That was how he died, was decapitation. Not the 36 stab wounds or the multiple blows Poisons. to the head. No, the, well, they the, didn't have the, the poison didn't work or the poisonings. And the ether plan was botched because they didn't have any. You can't have an ether <laughs> plan without ether. Yeah. Yeah. That, that didn't go up anyway. Um, apparently, uh, William, Marianne and Paul Jr. All laughed and made jokes while they sectioned up Paul Sr.'s body and uh, to hide it. What did he do? Uh, apparently, he's just a, he's, hate him so he much. He's a rough guy. They, they didn't like him. God. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he had it coming. I don't know. Maybe they're all crazy. From what I just read, he was just worried about his daughter. So, I don't know. Probably more to the story. Probably. So, October 16th, 1985, William Van Diver was to be sent, was to be uh, executed. executed. So, the first administration of 2,300 volts didn't kill him. William was still breathing. The execution took 17 minutes and five jolts of electricity. Oof. Apparently, um, they had witnessed that the execution, uh, that his lawyer had witnessed the execution and said that there was smoke, there was smell of burning. Uh, the newspaper called the execution, quote, outrageous. Um, and in admittance, the Department of Corrections said, quote, the execution did not go according to plan. Yeah, Okay. Yeah. Uh, surprise. I thought I had three. I have four. So this last one. Okay. Pretty quick. Um, February of 1976. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Jesse Tafaro. Okay. Um, two officers approached a car that was parked at a rest stop. Uh, Tafaro, Jesse, and his wife, uh, Sonia, and their two children, nine and ten months. Oh, and a man named Walter Rhodes. They were all sleeping inside the car at this rest stop. Now, Tafaro had previously been in prison and he was on probation. One of the officers saw a gun lying on the floor inside of the car. He woke everyone up and he first asked uh, the man in the back, uh, Walter Rhodes, because that was it was in the back seat. So he asked Walter Rhodes. Then he told Tafaro to get out of the car. Now, according to Rhodes, Tafaro uh, whipped out his own gun and shot both of the officers with it. Now, the gun was legally registered to his wife because he couldn't legally have one, you know, with criminal history and whatnot. Yeah. Um, obviously, this brought other cops to the scene. And according to Tafaro, Rhodes shot the officers and handed the gun to him so that Rhodes could drive or whatever. Okay. Trying to get out of it. Didn't really work. Um, apparently, the they, they stole the police car. They disposed of the police car. They kidnapped a man. And stole his car. Why did you have to kidnap him to all, take his car? All three of them were arrested. The kids were also with them this whole time, by the way. God. <laughs> uh, they were caught in a roadblock. They were arrested, and the gun was found in Tafaro's waistband. Doesn't look good. His sentence, though, wasn't carried out until May of 1990. And he had... Wow, that's a long time after that. Pretty long time, right? That's almost... You said it was 1970-something? 76, about, mm -hmm. about 14, 15 years. It's a while. Um, he had the absolute honor 
of being electrocuted by the chair in Florida known as Old Sparky. Oh no. <laughs> That's an old one. Old Sparky. So during this execution, mm-hmm. okay, we did save the best for last. Six inch flames erupted from his head. Three jolts of power were required to stop his breathing. Okay, so they didn't stop when his head erupted was in flames. Was literally burning. Um, state officials said that this bo- botched execution was caused by, quote, inadvertent human error. Well, yeah. So what happened Yeah. was instead of using a natural sponge on his head, they used a synthetic sponge. Synthetic sponges are flammable. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I'm not a sponge expert. I would have thought natural ones could also catch fire. Well, they tried to not get... They've been using natural sponges forever. This was the first time they used a synthetic sponge. Were they just out of sponges and just thought, fuck it? I don't know. Uh, they apparently said that uh, by sticking a part of a synthetic sponge into a, quote, common household toaster and observing that it smoldered and caught on fire, um, they were... The, the lawyers were able to prove that <coughs> that officials probably did this intentionally because they were like, this is common knowledge that it's flammable. Okay. Um, now, other inmates claimed that old Sparky was fixed and tampered with to make uh, Tefero's execution more like torture. He was a cop killer, after all. Mm. They hated him. Make an example out of him or whatever. And, you know... Old Sparky has never caused six inch flames off of people's heads. Um, by the way, this was a uh, rumored, not fact, but rumored to be the inspiration uh, for how Edward Delacroix was executed in the Green Mile, uh, the Stephen King novel. Yeah, but in the I don't I, I read the novel. I don't remember exactly so, what happened, but in the movie, in the movie, he just didn't wet the sponge. He just didn't wet the sponge, but something similar does happen. Yeah. Well, not wetting the sponge is far easier to convey. On screen rather than being like a different sponge. synthetic sponge <laughs> instead, you know, <laughs> that just makes sense. That was a good call <laughs> for whoever directed that. <laughs> yeah. Um, damn. Uh, That's that a was rough way to go. That was only the like electrocution ones. And that was only like the 10 that happened like in that time period. There were some that happened like a little more recently. Some happened before. Um, those were not the worst. The absolute worst were the lethal injections. Ugh. Reading those botches were insane. And that's what we use today. You had specifically talked about that. Because um, I know we've talked about the electric chair before. We've uh-huh. done so many of these episodes. I know we have. I just I can't remember the context, really. Um, but not too long ago, you talked about somebody. I probably talked about old Sparky. No, 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 no. Not the electric chair. Lethal injection. It was some guy who had abused and murdered like a three year old. Yes. Uh, He he got the injection in and immediately started screaming in pain and started slamming his head against a metal pipe that was behind him. And I think that's actually what caused his death was. I thought you had trauma. Then it went on for a really long time. Him doing that. Yeah. And I think they re-injected him. And then it was found out that like the the people forgot to quote unquote forgot to inject certain things and doubled up on something else. Yeah, it was something like that. Yeah, I don't I don't think that's a mistake that you make, but they they argued that it was it was the first the first lethal injection uh, execution in that place in like 20 plus years. Sure. So it's probably that dude's first rodeo or he hasn't been in the game of executing for 20 plus years. (laughs) I don't know. His execution skills are really rusty. He just made a few mistakes. Like some said that he was drunk or whatever, and he made a mistake. I don't know. But yeah, that's a brutal way to go. Yikes. All of those were pretty rough. You know, did they have it coming? Some of them, maybe. Sure. It's not like today. We're like, according to a jury of their peers, at least. I was like, look, today you don't get the death penalty. Like, unless you did something fucking heinous, you know, like absolutely vile. That's got to be pretty bad. Um, other people do get the death penalty sometimes today for like one murder. Some people or something don't though when they really should. But then it also takes decades 
actually go through with it? To follow through because you're given so many appeals and whatnot. And like, I get it because sometimes it's a mistake. Yeah. But that's very rare. I feel like that's, I feel like it's more common for a botched execution than it is for you to be on death row by mistake. I guess I wouldn't know. I would just imagine like, sure, you can still find corrupt people, but just technology and stuff being what it is now. I'd imagine mistaking you as the guilty party is just harder to do now than back in the day when it was mostly a lot of guessing. Yeah. But I don't know. Wild, wild, crazy. So if you, if you are a loved one or on death row right now, you better, better read up on your executioner's lethal injection skills. May I spin the wheel? Oh yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Okay. Honestly, I'm not shocked. So I think these are things that you're not supposed to be shocked by. Um, I can start. Honestly, I'm not shocked that that one bachelor from The Bachelor came out as gay. I called that he was gay. Danny was watching the show. And I was like, oh, I didn't know he was the main dude. I just walked in and saw him talking to someone. And I was like, oh, is this like a, like a gay guy that's like friends with someone? She's like, um, that's The Bachelor. Interesting. <laughs> okay. I uh, didn't know that. Don't watch The Bachelor. So yeah. I have no context. But I imagine that would be something that might be shocking to some His people. His name started with a C. Uh, I don't or wouldn't be. Yeah. Um, so honestly, I'm not shocked. There's a video that is circulating right now. I assume it's recent and it's of, uh, Gary Busey on a podcast, some, (laughs) some podcast. Okay. He has headphones on like us and he's got a microphone here and he starts talking about buttered sausage. Okay. I don't know the context of this, of the conversation. I just know that for some reason he's staring right into the camera and blinking And he's talking about buttered sausage. How's it made? What's in it? How do they make it? And he starts saying stuff like that. And then someone was like, okay, so what do you mean? It's just buttered sausage. Just not your thing, not your jam. And he goes, I don't buy jam. I buy honey. I buy, I buy (laughs) fresh raw honey and I kiss it on the lips. But he like, it's a long S I kiss it on the lips. (laughs) And he just stares right into the camera. Um, He's done too much cocaine. Yeah, I saw it. And honestly, I'm not shocked. Okay. Uh, here's one. Um, I just saw a clip of Theo Vaughn on his podcast talking. Mm-hmm. And like, I think Theo Vaughn's hilarious, but I witnessed him have crack jaw <laughs> on his podcast. Okay. He's sitting there talking and he keeps like, like just sticking his little, you know, <laughs> he got a little crack jaw and I was like, ah, oh, all right. He's coming down. <laughs> he started the podcast up here and it's, it's on his way down now. <laughs> Um, but wasn't shocked to see that. Just thought it was an extra little bit of humor. <laughs> and he was talking about, talking about daytime racism. Daytime. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is it different from nighttime? Yeah. 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 You know, he was, he was making a joke. Like, you know, he's like, it's like, it's like, you know, it's a, it's nothing violent. Like it's nothing crazy. It's not even like all the time. He's like, it's just like, you got something in your teeth, you know, and then you pick it out and you're like, what, what the, like, what is this? What's in my teeth? You pull it on, he's like, is that the N word? Like what? <laughs> uh, but yeah, he was talking about daytime racism. Um, but yeah, he had he had the crack jaw. Got it. Okay. What else is not shocking? Not shocked. Uh, I'm not shocked that Mission Impossible Seven: uh, Dead Reckoning Part One uh, really didn't do as well as they wanted it to do. I don't even know if they made their money back on it. Specifically, because why wouldn't you just delay the release of your movie by a week or two? They released it the same time as Barbie and Oppenheimer. And that's all anybody was talking and about. And it was such a huge, like they, they did so well with the social media marketing of that. Cause all they did was plant like four seeds and they let all of us idiots grow those trees for them. And they made so much fucking money. And yeah. Tom Cruise and his people were like, we can do better. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I really don't think you can. Uh, honestly, I'm not shocked. That on reptilian Reddit, <laughs> they keep posting videos <laughs> of like close up shots of Joe Biden's wrinkly skin. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, natural skin doesn't fold like that. Stupid. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. You're done. That's you're all done my now. shocking stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, the opposite stuff I'm not shocked by. Stuff you're not unshocked. Yeah. But Joe Biden's wrinkly skin looking inhuman and, uh, you know, Gary Busey. 
being inhuman. He is inhuman. He really scares me. Anyway, if you liked what you heard, please like, rate, subscribe, and share this podcast. You can share it with anyone who likes the movie The Eternals or maybe anyone who is shocked when they see Gary Busey. Anyone who's shredded like Daniel Radcliffe recently. Yeah. Um, anyone who fears the Buseys, you know, yeah. what's going on over there? Not sure. Maybe anyone who's seen Celebrity Apprentice. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think it really comes up in conversation, but if it does, share the podcast. Anyone who's old or knows someone who is or has seen an old person, visit our website at threeshotsin.com. We have links for you there. So many. It's so much fun to click them. Do we got a link for Tilted Tinker on there? We don't have a link for Tilted Tinker. We will by the time this episode comes out. So click that link, go to Tilted Tinker, and buy yourself some wooden, uh, I was going to say delicacies, but you don't really eat them, right? Just grab yourself some wood. Yeah, and just get a, get a fist full of wood. Yeah. Yeah, use it to fill use it to fill the holes in your heart. Thank, that was nice. Wasn't that nice? Yeah. I'm yeah, going to write that down. Nice, you should. I'm going to write that down. I'm not going to write that down. Yeah. I'm going to do it after when we're not recording anymore. You wouldn't remember it even if you did write yeah, well, it down now. I remember all my notes. Look, Patreon, no email me. Why? You know what, what I mean? What does it mean? Patreon didn't email me. Oh. <laughs> Why not? I got to figure it out. Okay. But short, like Patreon, no email me. Why? You see? It all makes sense. Join us next week where we will be talking all about- Winner. Winner? Yeah. Like winner, winner, chicken dinner? Just like that. Like like maybe how like- uh, like a person who can't pronounce T says uh, winter. Winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a Brit. Where you celebrating Christmas this winter. Yeah, like that. Something like that. Yeah, or like, yeah. Or like it's going to be a cold winter. Oh. You know? oh. Right? Get a little Sam Elliott or something. Uh-huh. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That didn't sound like Sam Elliott, but. No, but it, but it kind of does, right? Not really, but okay. You got a sarsaparilla. Is that was, was that it? It sounded like someone who was trying to sound like him but didn't okay dude (laughs) (laughs) also shut the fuck up thank you for listening (laughs) missed the mark (laughs) whatever we're gonna go now bye bye don't shit on my (laughs) sandwich